Thank you, Laura and Andrew. Beautiful as always. Well, welcome to Unity Church Mains. When I was teaching elementary school, when March came along, we always marked on our little school calendar whether the March came in like a lion or a lion. And then we would check at the end of the month to see if that thing really worked. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. So, well, look what happened. So, lamb today, if you overlook the cold. So, but anyway, we're off to a good month. And, uh, you know, spring comes this month. So, we'll be, huh? Flower spring comes. That would be great. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, John Anderson will be our chaplain today. And uh, let's see, anything else? Oh, well, you've got to have coffee and goodies after church. They're always available up in the community room. So enjoy that, because that's where you really meet each other and we have a good time. And if you're visiting for the first time, we do have a guest book you can sign. And uh, there's a welcome packet there for you and a blue card with your contact information. and. Uh, you can put it in the offering bag. Okie doke. Well, okay, let's take a moment for prayer. Dear God, we turn to you in prayer knowing that you have led us to this time and this place. We know that there is an inter eternally durable wisdom at work within us. And that is what makes all the difference. We accept the will, joy, peace, and love of the divine as the center of our being and the foundation of our lives. We are receptive to divine ideas and greater understanding. We move forward with wisdom and clarity, allowing ourselves to be guided to the answers we seek. Working in harmony with you, Holy Spirit, we will bring about inspired results. Thank you, and so it is. Okay, now we'll have our uh, <coughs> world, Unity Worldwide uh, affirmation together. There is one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good, omnipotent. In the Unity Church of Ames affirmation, together, through the Christ Spirit in us, we create a better church and a better world. So be it. daily word is faith. With faith, I manifest what I imagine. When I use my imagination to envision the future I desire, I know that simply imagining it will not make it happen. When I believe in my heart that what I imagine will manifest, I walk in faith until it does. Sometimes what I imagine is the next logical step in a familiar path. Other times, it calls for a new path. Either way, I am guided by spirit and emboldened by faith. A hibernating bear relies on her inner wisdom to know when spring has come, and it is safe to lead her young cubs out of the den. Spirit tells me when it is time to emerge from my den of contemplation. Faith fuels my readiness to take action. I have faith in divine guidance and in my ability to manifest the life of my dreams. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Thank you, Clark. Good morning. Happy New Month. There was a cartoon in the Des Moines Register this morning. I think it was Mutz. And he's greeting and he says, well, what month is it? And he says, March 1. 
Okay, March, 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 March. What month is it? March. Okay, we're marching. Here we are. It's March 1. So, and it is wisdom or is it judgment? Wisdom or judgment? That is the question. In our books that we have as part of our 12 powers, in our little Discover Your God-Given Potential, it is wisdom. It is wisdom, and in William Warch's book, How to Use Your 12 Gifts from God, it is judgment. Originally, with Charles Fillmore's writings on the 12 powers, it was judgment. So what is it? Wisdom or judgment? Good question. Actually, this is a tough power to really grasp. Partly because we have so much practice with the very human application of it, don't we? We have lots of practice making snap judgments, jumping to conclusions, um, misjudging others and ourselves, Lots of non-spiritual exercise here. And it's so subtle. It's very, very subtle. We kind of haphazardly approach this power without a lot of self-awareness. I do. I have to own. Because we like to pass judgment, right, on what someone says. Did anybody get in on that dress thing this week? <laughs> Wasn't that the craziest thing? On the internet, there was this dress. And some people's vision allowed them to see it as blue and black. And some people saw it as white and gold. Well, even our house was a house divided. Because Todd saw everything as blue and black. And of course, I saw the white and gold, right? And so who's right? Oh my goodness. I think that got, I don't know how many hundred million hits, right? It's, it's kind of like the toilet paper question. <laughs> Which way should you hang the toilet paper? <laughs> and we have a lot of those judgments every day that happen in our mind, right? Right here between the ears. Nobody can hear them. We may not say it out loud, but it's there in our mind. What if they could hear them? Wouldn't that be interesting? That would take it to a whole nother level, wouldn't it? Do you remember in 2000 the movie What Women Want with Mel Gibson? Do you remember that? Yes, it was a little crazy. I watched it this week. We had a snow day. so Because it really popped into my head. He was um, in the bathtub and zapped by electricity. And so suddenly he could hear what all the women were thinking about him. <laughs> it was interesting, remember that? <clears throat> and things he didn't want to hear. <laughs> the judgments they were making about him, about his looks, about everything. What they really thought about him. And he didn't much care for it. He was in advertising, remember the, the plot, right? And so he began to use that to his advantage. But what if we could hear, or people could hear what we're thinking, right? What if people could hear all the judgments that pass through our head? Ooh. I have to be careful. My license plate says Rev Deb. So now people know I'm in town, right? Deb <laughs> says he saw it, right? I was at a conference yesterday at the UCC Church. And I've gone every year. It's delightful. It's their theologian in residence. And it, the whole theme was music. And I have to say how grateful I am for our Unity Joy songs and our New Thought music. Because they, they're, they're struggling so hard to find uplifting music that shifts out of kind of the old consciousness of pain and suffering. Well. I'm at lunch, right? And there's this lovely lady sitting right next to me, and we actually sat next to each other last year at the lunch. And she said, does your car say Rev Deb? <laughs> and I thought, oh God, what did I do? <laughs> Interstate 35. You know, I just 
couldn't really remember. And I said, yes, it does. Did I do anything really stupid? And she said, not at all. I just figured out who you were and that we do know each other. And she's a minister in Indianola. So, but it made me aware that my license plate says my name and people know that and they're beginning to know me and well, what kind of judgments are they making? Well, that is our human power of judgment, judgment right? <coughs> and it's where we begin. It's where we begin with this power of wisdom or judgment. It's where we start. And in truth, you said it when I got here. I heard you say it and I thought, oh, you must have read the talk ahead of time. Well, I think it's both and. And you're right, it's both and. Which is it? It's both and. Because we use our human faculty of judgment to make decisions, to draw conclusions. And we have a spiritual faculty of wisdom to draw upon to enlighten and illuminate those decisions. To enlighten us, to illuminate the decisions we make. You know, our human judgment, our human selves say, you never have a second chance to make a first impression. Right? You've heard that. You never have a second chance to make a first impression. And technically that's true. <clears throat> but wisdom tells us that we want to have compassion. And that the first impression that somebody makes may not really be the whole truth about that person. The first impression we have of them may just not really represent all that they are. There's much more to each one of us than that first impression might be. Wisdom allows us to go past that first impression and see all that is really there. See all that is really there in each of us. Now this little book is really like a prescription. And what it says is that the very first thing that we are called to do in developing the spiritual power of judgment is to unlearn everything we thought we knew about it. Oh, wow, that's a lot of unlearning, isn't it? That's a lot of putting it in reverse. That's a lot of letting go. But it's worth it. Because we can only step into wisdom when we unlearn all the stuff we've been practicing about being judgmental. Now, I've heard it said that being judgmental is the last addiction that anyone wants to give up. I think it might be true. Because in unlearning, in how we are describing judgment and wisdom, we are going to describe what it is not. What is it, what it is not. What judgment and wisdom is not. And it's oh so subtle, right? Just like looking at Rev Deb, watching her drive and going, she's really a minister, are you kidding? Mm. Right? We all do that. It's very subtle. My first aha was how subtle it is happened at Unity Village, right? It was the very last week of my SEE classes to be a licensed Unity teacher, finishing the leadership classes, my last time at Unity, I thought, my last hurrah, I was, I was there to be very spiritual. <coughs> I was sitting in class with my friends at lunch. Or I was sitting from, with my group of friends at lunch in Unity Inn. And of course, we are chewing on what someone had said during the previous class. <coughs> and we were all going to be in class together 24-7 all week long, right? And of course, we weren't saying it to this person. We were just all chewing on it because it, it stirred a lot of stuff. And I heard myself saying, oh, 
she is so judgmental. <laughs> right. And in that moment, oh, I heard it. Oh, wow. Oh, I got it. By the grace of God, I was able to laugh at myself and sort of repair it, right? By saying tongue in cheek. And of course, I'm not, right? Of course, I'm not. People at the table laugh. <clears throat> and it stung a bit as I laughed at myself, as I got my own point. <laughs> That's always really fun, isn't it? Okay. But there was somebody in that class that just really got my goat. You know, you've heard me say, <clears throat> they can't get your goat if they don't know where it's tied. Well, <laughs> she and I had the same goat. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it was not pretty. Unlearning usually isn't. And it's not particularly enjoyable. Since I was going to be in class with this person all day long, from 8 in the morning till 5.30, and at Unity Inn and on campus, I was going to be seeing her a lot. <coughs> I was going to have lots of opportunities to explore this judgmental goat. Hmm. <clears throat> now, William Warch says that the purpose of our spiritual power of judgment is to help us grow spiritually in consciousness. The purpose of it is to help us grow spiritually in consciousness. It's a tool. It's a tool for our spiritual development. It's a tool for our spiritual development, not our classmates, not our spouse, not our neighbor, not the person cutting you off on the freeway. It is a tool for our spiritual development. Okay. Don't have to like it. Just have to do it. Don't always get what you want. You usually get what you need. And when we approach our capacity for judgment as a tool for our spiritual development, then it really does become a whole new ball game. The question is, we're not going to approach judgment as an addiction. We're not going to approach it in our usual human fashion, right? How do we use our spiritual judge power of judgment without lapsing into being judgmental? Especially when someone really gets our goat and we just can't let go of it. Well, what Warch says is that we step into our spiritual power of judgment by making judgments using good judgment, which he describes as our ability to come to conclusions. And we do this repeatedly as we learn more and more about a subject, about another person, about a particular situation. It takes a little bit of time. What he says is, God is all that is, limitless in all intelligence. As a human being, you are unable to comprehend all that is. You can comprehend only so much at a time until you're ready for more. Often you need to rest on a subject until you incorporate it into your consciousness. Okay then. That's a really powerful statement. Often we need to rest on a subject, rest on a challenge, rest on whatever is in front of us until we incorporate it into our consciousness. The word incorporate, corpus, is the Latin root, and that means just bring it into your whole body, mind, spirit. So we can't formulate our power of judgment until we rest on it for a while. It has to become part of your body, mind, spirit so that it's no longer a what, but a how. 
It's no longer what I think, it's instead how do I look at other people, at what I do, at all these situations in my life. It's not a what, but a how. What do I mean? Well, when we make the move from being judgmental and judging to being discerning, we make the move to wisdom, we make the move to discernment, then wisdom becomes the lens through which we start to look at all that is. Wisdom becomes the lens that begins to allow us to see everything that's truly there. Wisdom changes how we view the circumstances of our life. It changes how we look at other people's behavior. And it takes time to cultivate. It takes time to cultivate wisdom. Now, the spiritual powers of faith and strength that we have been talking about also take time to cultivate. But judgment can be fast acting, right? Think about it. Judgment is very fast acting. It's in our consciousness right away. We walk into an experience and you just look at who's there, you look at what they're serving, you look at the circumstances and you immediately decide this is not going to be very fun. I don't think I'm going to like this very much. And guess what? You don't. Somebody else can look at that same set of circumstances and make a decision, I'm going to love this. This is going to be fabulous. And guess what? It is. And it's the lens, your judgment, that makes you step into that experience. It's fast acting, right? Judgment is fast acting. Wisdom takes a little longer. Because when we come to those snap decisions, we come to those conclusions right away, it can be fast acting in our consciousness just like Alka-Seltzer. Just like Alka-Seltzer. We might get relief, but we might never really discern what it is that gave us the heartburn in the first place. Right? We're missing the opportunity for spiritual growth. To grow in consciousness when we encounter these challenges, or you encounter something really wonderful, and you just experience it without wisdom, then you're not sure what it is that contributed to that feeling and that experience of it being so wonderful. Cultivating the spiritual power of wisdom is an invitation to go deeper, to use it as a tool for our spiritual growth. And it requires discernment, it requires time. <coughs> takes a bit more time, a bit more awareness, a bit more reflection, and a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer. We don't get there oftentimes very easily. Now let's go back to Unity Inn and my moment of embarrassment and chagrin, pronouncing someone to be so judgmental. And it was a moment to call upon the spiritual power of strength. Just to be with my uncomfortable feelings of how I had shown up that day. Just to be with that and allow myself to feel that discomfort. Making the joke about it, it's like the alka right? It sort of gave me relief. But then I realized, this is a big deal here. I am really stuck. I could not get off the hook with this woman. Every time she opened her mouth, I wanted to smack her. Now I'm about to become a licensed unity teacher. I don't think that's the right mindset for this. Because she was constantly, see, I'm justifying it, right? Yada, yada, yada. She's constantly saying to each one of us, well, what's in your consciousness that caused that for you? And what's in your consciousness that caused that for you? And you're causing all your own problems. I go, well, okay, I, I don't need it from you too. 
what was in my consciousness? I don't know. Would you shut up already? <laughs> That's where I was. And it's only Tuesday. <laughs> Gonna be a long week. How do I get out of this? It was an opportunity to go beyond alka seltzer to go beyond just laughing at it, beyond making jokes about it. Well, at some point, I found myself just sitting there like, this has really got to change. What am I going to do with this? And I went, I got this divine idea, all right? Go walk the labyrinth. Unity Village has this huge labyrinth. And it's in the parking lot right across from the activity center. It's big. And it takes at least 50 minutes to go all the way in, stand there in the center, and then go out, come out. So it's a commitment of time, commitment of energy. But that's the message I got from spirit. OK, well, I'll do it. Because the idea of the labyrinth is that you walk in with your challenge, your question, your problem, and when you get to the center, you draw upon spirit for wisdom. You, the intention of leaving your issue, your problem there, and you draw upon spirit, which is the other function of judgment. Our judgment and capacity for judgment allows us to draw upon spirit for wisdom. Well, be careful what you pray for, because you know you just might get it. So I, thank God there was nobody else in the labyrinth that day. I, I wouldn't say so much that I walked the labyrinth as I stomped it, right? <laughs> All the way in. I cannot tolerate this. I cannot... You know, if she tells me one more time what's in my consciousness, I'm going to slug her. I just can't handle blah, blah, yada, 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 right? All the way in. And I got to the center, and I was just exhausted with it. I finally had enough. I was getting sick of myself. And I stood there, and I said the, the most powerful prayer that any one of us can ever say. And I meant it from the bottom of my heart. God help me. God help me. And I just stood there. And as loud as you please, I don't know if anybody else would have heard it, but I heard it. It was that divine guidance voice that said, Deb, don't judge. Just observe. Don't judge. Just observe. Oh. Oh. I can do that. I can do that. Don't judge. Just observe. Observe what she says and observe what you want to say. Observe how you feel. Observe yourself. Watch what other people do. What happens when this, when this kind of thing is said? Just observe. Oh, well, yeah, I could begin to do that. I could begin to live into discernment. I could begin to hear the pain behind that energy of, of yammering and everyone about what their consciousness has in it. I could begin to have compassion for her and for myself. I could begin to actually live into the birth of wisdom in me. Just meeting people wherever they are. And letting them be whoever they are. Letting me be whoever I am. And letting it just be. That's the birth of wisdom. That's where we are invited to go in cultivating this power, this spiritual power of wisdom. So it's both. It's both judgment and wisdom. Because this power 
invites us into spiritual maturity. It invites us into this place of becoming more spiritually mature. By the end of the week, I really could feel compassion for this person. And I could feel gratitude. Gratitude that I didn't just take the Alka-Seltzer to look for the easy way out, the immediate relief, but that I could be with it and invite wisdom to come into my heart and to be present in my consciousness. It's a tool, and we're all invited to use that tool, to invite that tool into all the circumstances of our life. There's an affirmation on the back of your bulletin. And it's one that you can take with you this week because judgment is really opening. It's our capacity to open to that divine wisdom. Would you say it with me? I am guided by divine wisdom in every thought, word, and action. So we're going to take that into meditation, take that into our consciousness. We're going to incorporate it, make it part of how we look at the world, our body, mind, spirit. And we're going to sing quietly, quietly.
continue to breathe. And as you sit now for a moment in the silence, let that love and light of spirit illuminate your consciousness in the silence. We are here in the place of peace. In that silence, in that stillness, beyond right and wrong, we are in a field of peace. Knowing and trusting the divine power of wisdom to guide our every choice, our every move our every thought. As we come back to this time and this place, we are filled with gratitude that whenever we need to this week, we can pause and pray and go to that quiet place and meet our power of wisdom. So let's sing once again.
light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And life is fantastic. Yay, God. Amen. <laughs>